Is it for real one this time? It's a for real one. It's a for real one this time. Hey guys. Are we live? We're live. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Welcome to SLC Wednesdays, right? Yeah. Today's Wednesday? I think so. I think yes. so. I think yes, so. it's Wednesday. Yes. yes. Uh, we're going to make stuff out of Cayman tail. Yes. And the difference between Cayman and alligator is what, Liz? I'm sure there's some scientific mumbo jumbo out there that I don't know, but usually Caymans are just smaller. Yeah. They're yeah. farm raised and they have a few different uh, differences in how they look. I think that they're a little easier to work with. Yeah. Well, typically they don't have as big of a bone structure. Less expensive. Yeah. 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 I like them. So I made as much as I could out of one of these Cayman tails, which we'll be selling. Do we have the item number and everything up? FSL 91. FSL 91. If anybody's and seen a dog bone on our website. Hey, you guys noticed Tony added a new thing this week. <laughs> I saw he, that. he got creative that? Um, for just kind of our limited time specials or I guess whatever little dog bone we want to add to the website for mm -hmm. you guys to find. It is now up in that top toolbar on our website in between some of the categories. There's a little dog bone for you there. You just click on it. And you, you just get click a good on deal. it. Yeah. And there'll be something. Right okay. now, I think there's these tails. Do we still have any elephant? There is some elephant. There's some elephant. Now, guys, those elephant pieces are really big. Um, you have to click into the listing, but mostly I think they're going to be between like 350 and 450, 500. That's the ones that are left. So okay. we have yeah. eight pieces of them listed, and I had them disappearing from the website, and people freaked out and thought that we were listing <laughs> for 125. But we had one piece that was only oh. four square feet. Gotcha. Yeah. And so it disappeared. And like, oh, I thought you said it was 125 instead of starting at 125. Gotcha. So gotcha. they're all showing there now. There's four left. We've got four elephant pieces left. They're they're pretty good size, these pieces. So if you're interested in an elephant, click on that dog bone. Um, and then also these Cayman tails will be there. And those FSL what? 91. 91. 91. And I think we've got 30 of these. We got, we have 30 a available. We've got, so we've got a, a stack of these. Got. And we've got, we got tail. They were, tail. They were really good to work with. And they double as beard extensions. Yes. Or ears. Yeah, so I'm going to show you all the things you can potentially make with these. Well, not all the things, but just some of the things that I made with them. Uh, minimalist wallet was one of the things that I made. Um, I don't know. Can you switch to yeah. the overhead camera? Okay. And, why, uh, don't we, why don't we take this off? Yeah, why don't we take and that off? And then you can see that. There we Look, go. There That's a good is. idea. So a minimalist wallet. I did the, uh, the back of the tail itself um, right here. I just kind of picked a cool spot. with. The, what do you call these? The spikes, the spines, the... The spine. Well, the, now that you ask The pointy me. things. I know they have a, a name, but I can't think of what the name is, but... I know the top of it is a crown. <laughs> the pointy things on the crown. These, the, yeah. um... Tail something. Backstrap, backstrap. Backstrap. There you it's go. part of the backstrap. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you. So, so I just placed it in the center and got my pieces oh, cut out for each of those, and I kind of liked the pattern of that down the spine, so so that's that's what I did. I made a minimalist wallet for that, and what direction am I going here? Right here. Oh, there we go. There it is. All right. Yeah, guys, check yeah. that out. Look at that. All right, on that camera. He looks good. So it looks pretty good. On this particular one, it's got just one single, or one little pocket, and then one big pocket, and then a little money clip on the back if you want to add those. Um, also made uh, a couple keychains out of the tail, uh, so two. two you may little have broke one on. right before this started. <laughs> oh yeah, you broke mine. That's cool. what happens when you thin it down too much; it uh, becomes brittle. So th don't thin it down too much. Uh, watch band, which is probably what I'm going to focus on today. This was the very first watch band I ever made. I've never made one before. It didn't turn out so hot, but it's it's a great example of a first time project of something, right? So, Where you could start. Yeah, and then a mug. I get these uh, mugs off of uh, eBay sometimes, or I find them in antique shops, and I like to go to Renfest and conventions and things like that. So that's good. a sturdy mug, guys. Yeah, it's made out of made out of pewter. It's yeah, pretty. You can knock somebody out with that mug. It's it's heavy. It's it's pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> So just a bunch of things you can make with it, and then this is all the all the scrap I had left from the tail. Is just hey, a couple little pieces tails? that you can use from embellishments. There are four hundred a piece. Ooh. No, I don't, I don't think they're that much. I don't know. What do we have them listed at? Twenty five bucks. Twenty five. Twenty five bucks. Jeez. I mean, you could yeah, sell this wallet for fifty or seventy five. It's funny that you say that because when I posted this on my Instagram like a month ago, I made that a, about a month ago. I had two people hit me up at the fifty dollars price point for that wallet. Nice, yeah. So, I so exactly, you already think, have uh, paid for your tail. Yeah. I've made a little bit. I haven't sold it because oh, I didn't know if we're going to give it away or not. So, gotcha. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with the uh, um, 
start with the pieces. I, I prepped this a little bit, um, but I left the pieces together so you can kind of see what part of the tail they're coming from. It's um, a jigsaw puzzle. It is. It's a jigsaw puzzle. So this top part right here had both of the uh, um, pieces of the wallets. Um, and I just did a single pocket wallet for this one. Nice. Um, backed it with some Herman Oak. And then, so that's what we've got left from that. And that's what I made these little key chop or key fob keychains out of, uh, were those pieces. And then this part right here, uh, would have been part of the mug wrap uh, with this part. Um, but since I'm using a little bit of a bigger uh, watch band template, um, I needed a longer piece for this uh, this particular part of the watch band. So these two pieces will be watch bands. These will probably turn into keychains. So set those aside. And then I'm going to focus on the watch band today, uh, basically because this is the second one that I've made, and I want to show people what it's like to make something for the second time after you've royally destroyed the, the first one. So uh, these templates we actually sell in store. Uh, here at Springfield Leather. This is the 42 millimeter one and we have a 38 millimeter one. So that's the uh, the 42 millimeter and Liz has the 38 millimeter? Uh, yes, 38 yeah. millimeter. Yep. Um, two uh, acrylic pieces and then it's got instructions in it on how to go through it. The only thing you would have to purchase would be the little... The little uh, smart band yeah, adapter thing. Smart watch bands yeah. ends, which are these, and then uh, a buckle. So whatever type of buckle you would want to put on it. Um, and those we also sell here at Springfield Leather as well. So, so first and foremost, I'm just going to lay these on the back. I backed these with Herman Oak. Um, I thinned them down. Um, you have to be real careful when you thin down uh, Cayman Tail or any exotic for that matter. Um, you've got a lot of fuzz on the back of these. There's a lot of texture um, that, that's on one of these skins. It really is. And if you run this... Uh, if you have access to a Skyver, but uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> if you have access to a Skyver, uh, you don't want to put this through the Skyver because it's going to hit these points right here it's and gonna just, just shred it. Eat all of it. Yep. Yep. It's going to shred it. So you, so gotta, you could take uh, it to a, uh, to like a belt sander if yes. you wanted. You could take mm -hmm. it to a belt sander and sand off a lot yep. of those fuzzies on the back. And that does work. That's yep. that's what I did for the wallets. Um, I don't know how close you can get in on uh, on this piece. But some of the, uh, when I skived this down, I, I did it on a, uh, um, on our in-house skiver. You can see that kind of glistening a little bit. Uh, the scales on it are clear. It's just an interesting anecdote. I thought like, like when you, uh, when you thin it down, uh, for some reason, those, those pieces are clear. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> so, but, so on the, on the back of this, I, uh, glued it down with some, uh, contact cement, with some barge contact cement, um, and then glued it to the back of or uh, put the glue on both pieces, put the pieces together, and then I, I uh, used my my roller to go over it and, and flatten it all out. So um, for the for the watch band, the first part uh, that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find out where it's going to bend because some of these uh, have yeah. they're uh, stiffer It'd in be different areas. To bend it in the middle. Yeah, of a scale. It, it really would. Yeah. And you can actually crack it if you do it wrong. Um, these are pretty soft and, and I haven't had any problems with it. Um, but in this case, I'm going to I'm gonna bend it right, right there. So I'm just marking that with my finger a little bit. Um, and that's where I'm going to put the center of this template. This template has a little mark on it and it says fold across here. And that's where I'm going to set it on here uh, before I trace. So... I generally use a pen. You can use a uh, um, like our silver marking pens that uh, that we sell here in store, but actually just a regular pen works fine. Um, and then trace around it. The only part that you're not going to want to trace on is this uh, this circle right here in the center. Um, it says right on it, "Cut for keeper only." Um, the keeper is the little part of the watch band. If you want to show that to him, Liz, the this this thing right here where it keeps the tail down. Yeah. So it's just like on just a like belt. A, yep, yeah. just like your keeper on a belt. Yep. So this little slot is for you to make a little keeper. Yep, and you don't want to do it on the watch band because if you cut that out of the watch band, you're going to have a hole right in the center it's of your watch It's going to be a sad day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the Cayman tail. Yeah. So I mark the outside of that. Um, you can, too. Uh, one of the things that I found when I'm when I'm crafting like this is my template will move all over the place. So so in this case, if I do that up and I haven't marked all my holes, I'm like, oh man, I got to line all this back up again, is use a weight. I mean, even the end of a hammer or something like that, you could put on there if you don't have a weight. But we do um, sell that dead weight. 
Yeah, dead weight. No, that's a, great, a handy little tool. It really, really is, especially with bigger projects where you're tracing around a really large portion of something. It's it's important to weigh that down, or you're cutting a straight edge on a ruler. Just put some dead weight on it. Put put your hammers on it. Put uh, that really heavy mug that I've got on it. <laughs> um, anything that you can find around your, to hold your workshop. It, hold it in place. Exactly. So these I'm going to mark out. Uh, these are the the holes for the uh, buckles, and it's the holes that uh, hold the watch band together, give it a little bit of rigidity on the on the end. So this this right here is this part of the watch. So I'm going to take this off. Kind of we have a quick question about the Cayman tail. After, yeah. we, after we put it to the Herman Oak, mm -hmm. can we oil it to help with the cracking or is it just the nature of the Cayman tail that's going to be cracking? Sure. So the Cayman tail itself, I think, I think with these, I think you're going to be fine. These are pretty supple. Mm -hmm. When you, when you get into, uh, like gator or Nile crocodile, uh, things like that that have bigger scales on them. When you bend those, if you flex them too much, you're gonna hear a pop and it's gonna snap. It's it's almost well, it's like- a bone. Yeah. It's yeah. a bone. I was about to say it's almost like a bone, but it is a bone. Yeah. So, but these are these are really soft. Like I, I can- those, We did have some of those gator skins as well that were tumbled and, sure. and the armoring on it were, were pretty soft. Yeah. 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 I think it all is really going to depend on the specific skin that you are working with and the mm -hmm. specific area that you're working with. Right. It's always yep. probably going to be better and easier to bend it in one of the folds than it is going to be bending it across the scale because that's yep. never going to want to lay flat. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I ran into that with a with a wallet that I was making. I had to remake it because I didn't know that. And when I went to fold it at the end, I heard a pop. I'm like, what is that? Did my thread oh, just no. break? And I look on the back and the scales right down the middle of it had busted. So yeah, no oiling is going to prevent those yeah. scales from cracking yeah and that that was a that was a 90 dollar nile crocodile skin so that that hurt a little bit but those are the lessons those are the things you remember so when you come to stuff like this <laughs> do that again yeah so learn from my mistakes <laughs> so so i've got that uh, got that traced on there um all the holes are marked out these holes we're actually going to have to mark on the other side or punch through on the other side I generally wait until I'm done and fold the whole thing over and then I punch those holes. I don't I don't mark them. And I'll show you why there's something called the called blowout uh, when you punch a punch a hole through something and I, I want them to look clean um, on the part that you're going to see on your watch band. So I want to do that when I'm done. Well, so at this point, either side potentially could be your top side. Correct. Yes. At this point. Yep. So whenever mm -hmm. he's done, he'll make he'll pick the side that he wants and then he'll punch the hole from top to bottom. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, a couple, couple more quick questions. Carmen sure. on Facebook, how many keepers do you have for this? The, I don't think the instructions may not have been sure that we had, and I think we're just using one keeper. Yes. Yes, just one. Yep. I mean, you mm -hmm. could use two. If you want to use two, you're just cutting two and then you're doubling up. I know some yep. iron watch straps that are leather do have two keepers. Yeah, sure. you can put yep. as many keepers. It's your product. Yep. Make as many as you want. Yep. Yeah, generally, uh, generally for watches, you only have one um, just... Well, that's personally what I like because I don't like a whole bunch of extra bulk on things that I'm wearing on my on my person. So, um, this you'll notice too on the template. If we can switch to the overhead camera again, um, this is the one that we cut out for the keeper. Uh, this hole. This one also has one that's very similar, but this is for the buckle turn back. So, like on a uh, uh, a belt, <laughs> um, you're going to have the turn back portion. This you actually do want to mark out on here. So it's just a, yep. That's where the the prong Your on the buckle, buckle will go through. Slot. Yep. Yes. Moscow. What's up, Russia? Germany. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. We got people from both. Going wow. worldwide, Andrew. I guess so. Love it. Yeah. All right. So they're just enjoying their dinner. Probably. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's have pretty the, significant time change, right? Mark said <laughs> right just right before bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours later, you thought he was eating dinner around the time we're doing videos, but Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so now now comes the point where you have to cut it. <laughs> Start punching holes. And this this is always the part that makes me nervous on uh on doing stuff, especially with exotics, because you get one shot at it and uh and if you screw it up, you either have to cover it up or find a way to make it work with the product. So, but, uh, we're going to cut carefully. We're going to cut very carefully. Um, I'm going to punch my holes first. Um, just cause that's kind of my, my method. I like to punch them before I cut them out. Cause it's, it's easier for me, I guess. So I don't think there's any specific reason I do it this way. I just, I just do. So. 
um, when punching, uh, punching holes like this, it's important to have a really solid surface underneath. If I were to punch this just on this, uh, this rubber surface that we have up here, um, it's gonna spring back and it's not going to punch <laughs> as easily. Kind of, yeah, yeah, you just, you, you push the leather instead of cutting the leather. Yeah. It absorbs so. all of the impact from the hammer. Yeah. Um, so having something solid underneath it, I, I have a little steel plate that I keep in my kits um, along with my little punch board over here and I, I put those together um, and it gives me a solid enough surface. So marble slab works great. That's what we got right here. Uh, yep. yep, marble slab, a little, uh, not a pound but a uh, poly board. So more holes on this side. What ounce did you do your leather set? The Cayman is? Cayman I got down to about two ounce and then, and the, then Herman the Herman Oak is about two ounce as well. Okay. Yep, yep, just roughly. Your, I think your watch wants you to go walking. It does. It's got a little guy yeah. on it. It's, it's got a little log. man on it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. There, there we go. Which camera am I on? Oh, there oh it's upside it down. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Can anybody on their treadmills with us? That's right. <laughs> what was that fallout? Yeah, it's fallout. Yeah, it's a little little pit boy if you guys are nerds. So. Yeah. Uh. We're all nerds. Yeah, I know. That's I, just made a, I made a quick guess. I'm not really nerd. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> At this point, I'm going to punch the uh, the holes on uh, uh, for where the buckle goes through on this side, but I'm only going to do this side. Okay. And we had a question: Did you cut your uh, oblong mm -hmm. hole there for your buckle? Uh, yeah, I noticed they, that I left that. Huh? So, <laughs> all right. So what I generally do with these, and I forgot to get my other punch out is I will find a hole punch that is about the same size as that, um, which is right about there, roughly. Andrew still does leather work like he doesn't work at Springfield Leather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The rest do. of us cheaters would go find an oblong punch at Clayton's table and exactly. use that. Uh, so you, you can get a punch that is actually that shape. Um, or pretty darn close. Yeah. yeah. This, this is what I use. So a hole punch, you could even use the hole punch that I use for these holes. Um, and do two holes, but you're, you're going to see what I do here in just a second. So I'm going to punch a hole on each end. And when I punch the, the hole on each end like that, you've still got that center portion that you have to work out. What I essentially did is I just rounded uh, the ends of this with the hole punch. And then I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to cut along those lines. And that will give you your, your oblong it shape. It looks like a cassette so. tape. It kind of does, doesn't it? It totally looks like a cassette tape. <laughs> little, little 80s throwback. <laughs> <here>. 80s <laughs> <laughs> What's a cassette tape? Mm -hmm. At least you didn't say 8-track. So. I'd miss the 8-track. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> In this, uh, you'll want to be careful. Us usually, I'll go about halfway with my cut, and then I'll flip it around and go halfway the other way, because if I go too far, you're going to cut right into the right into your project. Yeah, you don't want to see so, that little. No. Little cut so just little uh, little push cuts. Um, at least that's what I call them. Happy little push cuts. There we go. All right. You do so. fit so well in here. <laughs> happy little trees. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of Bob Ross references here. That's right. So, so that's what the backs uh, look like. You can't really see the holes in there. Maybe kind of sort of. But, uh, and then now we're going to cut uh, cut these portions out right here. I'm going to start with this one. Um, it's a little bit a uh, little bit easier to to cut around here. Doing the tips like this, uh, we do have punches that will actually cut that that tip for you. Um, I still use a razor blade. I've got the tools at home, but I I still do this. I, What's I don't that know why. punch you got sitting next to your scissors there? Uh, which one? These black ones or no, the one that's right below it? This one. Yeah. That one right there. How close does that match to the end? It's it's close-ish. Yeah. Not trying to. Not not quite as, not quite. as pointed. Yeah. That's that's more what I use for my rounded corners on the uh, um, like the minimalist wallets and things like that. Because if I'm cutting a rectangle, then I need something that will will cut that little oval shape. If you can kind of see it there. So. I'm trying, uh, trying to help you cheat. Yeah. <laughs> so I start to, I start up here, and what I'm doing, I'm not trying to curve with the blade. I'm not trying to, to do that, uh, that shape. You can, but generally on the other side of it, it doesn't look quite right. So I will make straight cuts. So I'll start out at the top, and I'll cut straight off my leather. 
I come to the other side and I cut straight off my leather. And what I did is I just cut a little bit into that pattern and now I'm gonna use little, little bitty cuts to go around the edge like that. So a couple things to keep in mind here, it is not gonna be perfection on the end of that. When we're done and we work with the edges, that's when we're gonna sand this down a little bit. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use some Tokenol or Toka Pro on it, and that's gonna make the edges look a lot better. So we're not going for perfection, but we're looking as looking to get as close as we possibly can. Without going over. Without going over, exactly. Because you can't put the material back. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yep, and that's, that's why I do little pieces here. Um, you could lay a straight edge across here. I like to do it freehand, and, and like Liz was saying, just a little bit at a time. So I'll slice into it with a little bit of pressure. I'll stop, I'll reposition, go a little bit further, stop and reposition. And if I need to, because we're coming up into a, like a bump right here, see which camera I'm getting on. Um, we're coming up into an area that I'm gonna have to circle around. Little contours. So I cut it off, you just get rid of it. And then start from this position and do the same thing we kind of did on the end when you're going around here. So let me get a little bit closer. So Andrew, we're gonna have a little competition for these folks. Oh yeah? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give away this fun valet tray. So there we go. this um shaving cream dyed valet tray. So what are we doing? Beautiful Somebody blue. Said, Can you make it look like water? So that I think so. <laughs> I think it looks good. Yeah, I think yeah. it looks pretty cool. Looks great. I like it. So, guys at home, what you can do to enter this competition is guess how long this gentleman's beard is without going over. <laughs> there we go. I'll give you a hint. It is not six feet long. <laughs> I know you would think that, but it's... You can do inches or like five and a half or five and a quarter. Closest one without going over. Since there are a lot of internationals, please feel free to do millimeters or centimeters as well, but just let us know that that's what you're doing yeah. so that us Americans can calculate correctly. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll make Tony convert it for us. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm coming to the other end, so I've got one, one end done, Ooh, um, and I'm gonna go it. around, and I'm gonna go a little bit quicker on the other side. Um, just wanted to show you how I did the edges. Let's see how fast he can cut this out. I know, right? Seven, eight, six and a quarter, ten, five and a half. Where are we measuring from? Like the bottom of the lip or the bottom of his face? Where his sideburn starts? What do you say, Andrew? How do you measure your beard when you measure it? I don't measure my beard. Who told you that? You said it on the last video that you measured it. <laughs> You can get yeah. out the line about it. Okay, all right, yeah. That's... I feel like from the bottom of the lip is the gut. Generally, when you measure a beard, you you start from the top of the mustache to the bottom. At least that's how I do mine, because that gives me the most length. Some people will do from the bottom count. of the lip. You can them like a whole I spent years growing this out as well. Like well what a, what do they do I could curl this up. When they do the beard competition, what do they Is that a part? thing? Yeah. It is a thing. Yeah. Queen they, City Beard and Mustache Federation here yep. in Springfield. The very first one they did here in Springfield, I didn't have a beard at the time. I just had a mustache. Big old curly one. I, so I'm a little bit sore about this, but in that competition, one of my buddies had a really nice mustache too, and he, he didn't know about the competition. So I'm like, oh, I'll invite him. He'll love doing this. And he ended up beating me in the competition. He took first place and I took second. That's what you get for inviting your friends. I know. So... <laughs> I could have been a contender. <laughs> he was so close. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right. Almost got this part cut out, and then we're going to switch to the other, other piece. Trying to talk as little as possible when I'm cutting with this razor blade. So, cut, cut leather, not hand. I know, right? <laughs> we don't want those kind of happy little accidents on camera. All right. Okay, so that's the first piece. And let's cut out the second piece and same type of thing. This particular piece is a little bit easier to cut because there's a lot more um, straightness on it. But where the where the fold is, um, where, it, uh, where it folds, you're gonna get a little bit of a bubble um, on, that, uh, on that part. A little so, bit wider. Yep, just a little bit wider. So, and see, I made, a, I made a mistake right there. I'm all right with uh, telling people about my mistakes. I put the, uh, I put the fold 
was supposed to go right here at the break, and I accidentally flipped my template around and I did it over here. Uh-oh. But I've already punched the holes, so we're about to find out how supple this leather is. <laughs> <laughs> We're distracting him too much. I know, right? It's a... I don't know. I I am totally okay with mistakes. I don't uh, I don't consider uh, mistakes a failure. I make a lot of them, and some of them are very costly mistakes. <laughs> but those are the ones I learned from the most, right? <laughs> I think we learned to call them discoveries this morning. There, yeah, that's right. We did. That's didn't right. We, we yep. don't make mistakes. We just yeah. discover new things. We discover um, new things. I don't know if we did. Do you know what the ounce on this, the Cayman was before you skived it down? Before I skived it? I do not, but I could find out. I, could, I can go. I've got uh, something here in my pocket that might help, mm -hmm. which we just happened to sell in store, too. So. Let's see. This might be a little bit awkward with... It's going to be real awkward. Cause... How about I go get a gauge gauge? Yeah, when I when I kind of slide this gauge on there, I'm in it at a three to four in Did the next section. When you were skiving this... Yeah. Did you find anything um, awkward about having to skive it? Yes, I couldn't skive the center of the tail, kind of like I was talking about earlier because of the ridges. I had to cut the piece off first and then skive it. Um, but when I did the, uh, did the original watch band, um, like the very first one I did, this one here, um, I did sand it. Um, I sanded the back of it and I, I actually went too, too far with this. I went too thin, so this, this part right here is way too thin. So, but yeah, I did uh, did run into a couple things there. Again, it's just a learning experience, some discoveries there. All right, we got the second piece punched out, and this part here, uh, the holes for the buckle, um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark those. And the way that I do this is I will fold it over, because this whole piece right here is just gonna be be folded and that's what this is gonna look like. Um, once we get to, this is a bigger watch. Remember this is the 40, 42 millimeter? 42. Yeah, 42 yes, millimeter and 38 millimeter. Just referring to the length of the, the actual watch band. But uh, to get the holes all the way through like that, I use uh, something called a scratch all. Uh, you can use a, uh, a needle, um, anything you really want. So the scratch all, that's, that's what this is or uh, I forget what another word is for it. Basically, a, a needle. They use it for saddle yeah, stitching. Just scratch all. Yeah, scratch all. So mini so ice works. pick. There we go. Mini ice pick. Hey, I like that better. And I'm just going to mark these holes lightly, just pushing through the ones that I've already made, um, so that it makes a couple of uh, um, here we go, a couple of pin marks. So you can kind of barely see those on there. Yep. This is going to help me center uh, those holes so that they match up on the other one. Um, then all this is going to get sanded down a little bit, and then I'm going to I'm going to glue it. So we got Liz with leather gauge. Yeah. So let's see if you can. Oh. Gauge some hey, there we go. Really close. Okay. So we got. <laughs> How awkward can we make this? How hard can we do? Okay. So oh look, look oh look at that. So in this section, like in the center, it's all the way up to about seven ounce here in this middle section. But on the edges, you're more like a three to four. So as you kind of come up, three to four, five. Four and a half. So mostly I would call it a three to four ounce. It's a three to four ounce, but you're gonna get some variation, obviously. Yep. So and the sanding method does work pretty good for thinning that stuff down, it but it makes a mess. <laughs> like so if you have a shop vac or a vacuum or something, put it by your sander because you're gonna get dust all over the place. You uh, have to set up a, a ventilation system. I get yeah, right. So <laughs> one of those big yep. dust collector fans. It right out. My yeah. husband tore his out of our because we have this dirty room in our shop where he makes his knives, but um, he hasn't made any recently, and he wanted to redo his his central like HVAC system for okay. his dirty room. Yeah. Um, but he's disconnected everything now. So when I need to uh. sand my sheets at this point, I just go in and then I just make these big cloudy messes because okay. the HVAC system. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's my All right. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's messy shop, right? So. right. Uh, will you show the inside that real quick? Marcus was saying, isn't the Cayman on the inside going to be uncomfortable? And that was true oh, sure. until 
And so I backed it with some Herman Oak. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. well, but even so, when you fold it over, that's you're still gonna have Cayman. But no, oh it's, yeah, that's it's a good not, point. Yeah, it's gonna it's, be. It's, it's, not, it's pretty soft. Yeah, it feels this good. This is really soft stuff. Oh, soft. And I even made my bend. I mean, if this um, were on the inside, yes, that would be uncomfortable. Yeah, probably. But we're not gonna put the spiky thingies on the inside. Unless you're sadistic, and then you could <laughs> just putting some needles on it. So it's a pain. But even <laughs> folding this over, I'm getting the fold uh, right on the the scale itself, and it's not cracking, and I'm. I'm pushing on it pretty hard. Generally, you're gonna you're gonna feel it pop, or you're gonna feel it get to that point, and it's not gonna want to spring back. And and I'm not I'm not getting that at all. So. You know, I think that they've got some processes, and I'm kind of just shooting this out of left field to where when they're tanning the the gator and the caiman and the crocodiles, they have they mm -hmm. use some sort of a chemical that that physically kind of eats that bone away. Oh, sure. um, yeah. During the tanning process, so that it's not as extreme. Okay. I'm, Heard that somewhere before. <laughs> if not, right. it's a good story. It makes a good That's one. true. It does. So. All right. So I'm just matching my holes up, making sure that I'm getting all my my holes properly fitted before I do all all the rest of this. And I'm gonna grab my buckle. Now we need some hardware. Now we need some hardware. Do you remember what your beard measured this morning when you woke up? I didn't measure it this morning. Oh. Did you measure it yesterday morning? <laughs> Don't measure it every day. <laughs> I measure it every three days. <laughs> it gives me a better, uh, you know, overall. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just hoping too much. That's right. <laughs> so between Monday and Tuesday, one of those days, he measured his beard. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's still a weird thing when I do it. Yeah. All right. Do we have some guesses That's yet? Old. We have a bunch of guesses. Was everybody okay switching their time for us today? We appreciate your patience with us getting on here a couple yeah, hours later good. than normal. Thank you. So uh, thanks for still hanging out. Had a big long meeting this morning. So. All right. This Sonny said that he has discovered a whole lot, but no mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Sonny. I love it. Thanks uh, for joining our discoveries. All right. So essentially when you uh, when you get to this point, see what camera I'm on. There we go. So, um, I don't attach anything and I don't start sewing until I put it together first to make sure that all my holes line up, that everything looks okay. Um, this part right here is going to pose some problems um, with the uh, um, with this part, with the hardware, because it's so thick. Um, we're trying to get through a very, or get those pins uh, through a very small um, portion here. Yeah, pull it out and I'll show you what I mean. So, Sometimes doing something and talking at the same time is a lot harder than, than you think. So so this this part right here, um, you've got the bar that com comes out, it's on like a little spring, and that's what this has to fit through. So right right now, it's barely getting through there. Um, so that's one important thing when coming to use these templates, your leather has to be a very specific thickness. It does, in and order at certain points it does. This one, I think we're going to be okay. Um, we're getting a little bit of uh, of flex there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you something that took me a long time to learn, uh, or just a lot of trial and error rather. Uh, skiving just a tiny piece or tiny portion of that down, because um, you don't want to skive the whole back of it. You just want that little piece. Sandpaper works great, but an edge groover works really good too. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, and I kind of did an example of it right here. If you take your edge groover, um, I, I always sharpen these before uh, before I start or I... Um, you polish them. Yeah, polish them. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Using the right terminology here. So a little bit of jeweler's rouge, that's what that white stuff is um, on my blade. And I just give it some force and I pull it back toward me. Um, it gets the little burrs off the, off the end of it um, for when you're going to, to do your edging. So, so that it's just kind of like butter across the edge and that's a very thin piece so that's here in the center um, like if I'm wanting to groove out this part where the fold is going to be um, right there I need to give this something to catch on to now I can I can just jam it down in there and it and it might do that but using a stylus um, to uh, and a stylus is just something they use in tooling um, for for making different uh, like uh, bevels or shading or things like that, but I just use it as a, as a normal tool. Um, on either side of this, and I'm not gonna do it on the watch because I think we have the right thickness there. I'll make two grooves with the edge of my stylus right here. So 
pretend that's just the, the fold where the, the watch is actually folding. You got your two grooves right here that I just made with the stylus. And then you're gonna take your, your edge groover and just push a little bit and just run it across your... Ooh, don't bevel your finger. I know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you do have to be careful about that. Uh, but I've done this enough that I'm, I, I don't catch my finger anymore, but I have done that a few times, so. So that's gonna thin it down um, based on how much pressure you're giving. You don't wanna go too far with this. If you go too far with it, you're gonna thin right through the back. Like I, I could tear this if I, if I pushed hard enough, but that's gonna give you um, a little bit of a, same, same thing that the sanding does, but- just Taking uh, out a little yeah. bit of material. So for what it's worth, just a little tip on how to, how to do that. So. We also have those shoe groovers that would work really well for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or the V-gouge. Yep. Just, uh, yep, just like an edge groover. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you didn't tear that Andrew and bring too much manly stuff in here. I know, I, I could have. I, I could tear it at full strength if I wanted to. But I don't like have to prove anything to anybody. Me and the Cayman Taylor. Right. <laughs> uh, next, uh, we're going to do some sanding and gluing. So I'm going to get my happy little pot of glue over here. These are probably one of the most handy things I have picked up in a long time. I look for fishing. Um, these could be for fishing. I picked them up at Walmart for a buck a piece. Nice. Um, in the uh, crafting department. And I think they're used to separate out beads. Um, we may have some here on our bead side, like some storage yeah, containers. Some. Uh, these, uh, they're perfect. It allows me to have just enough of each type of rivet that I want to have. Uh, this particular one stores like uh, my, uh, my jeweler's rouge, my sandpaper, uh, leather eraser, some burnishing cloth, some wax for when I want to do wax, wax thread. And it's got a, it's double sided. So all my edge groovers um, from my, uh, Perfect for all the many, yeah. many things of leather crafting. It, it really is. Yeah, it really is. It keeps them tidy, keeps them in their space. So what I was looking for was my sandpaper. So I take a rough sandpaper because we're going to glue this entire thing over. Now something to consider here, before you glue it, you want to make sure that this is going to go on there. This, I think, might be a little bit too thick, so I'm going to I'm gonna test it because the part of the gator that came through on here... No. No, we might be all right. Nope, I'm gonna have to come from the other side. So the scales, the direction of the scales matter too. If you're oh, going yeah. this direction here, it's gonna be smoother versus this is gonna pull up the scales. And so, but yeah. There we go. So nope, that uh, that works. So I got to this point and I am at the uh, the width of the leather. It's not uh, It's not gonna go any further than that. I can pull it through, I can yank it through, but it's it's not gonna wanna go. So trim it down. I'm gonna trim it down, but I'm only gonna trim it in the center. So right here, like I said, this is a spring um, that you can get out with a like a tool. I just use kind of the edge of my fingernail and that pops out right there. What we're wanting is we're wanting to get it right in the center there. So just a tiny, tiny bit. <laughs> take your hole punch and your hole punch is going to create just a little divot in the center, but you don't want to do too much. You just want to do a little at a time. Like Liz was saying, you can only it, take so much off. <laughs> you the can, interrupter you can't put it back, is here, so. guys. You didn't think you were going to get to do your interrupting Rusty without me. <laughs> I know. You, and, you have a thing or, in your ear. I know, right. <laughs> we're making a watch band. Uh, awesome. So I'm going through a lot of the little tips uh, for... Lefty, what are you doing? I'm controlling cameras. Oh, you're doing a good job. Thank you. All right, so just a little bit on the back side. Remember, this is the side that's gonna be facing everybody and, and you want it to look good. I start on the back and I do just a little notch and then I flip it over and I make sure they're centered. In this case, they're not, so they're not super aesthetically pleasing at this point, but it's gonna give me enough to try and fit this on and then we can clean those up a little bit. Andrew, I have a question. Yeah. So because over. you're folding this in half, uh -huh. could you have maybe lined it with a split? Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's a, that's a great point too. That's a great thing to we we sell split bundles here, and they're they're awesome for a lot of different things. Like that's what I use for my sharpener is I use splits. Just take a little bit more off there. Well, then if you're worried about thickness and you you only have a split that's three to four ounce, you can put it on half of it instead of lining the entire thing, and then when you fold it, every it you would just have one center lining instead true. of two layers of yep. lining. That is true. Yeah. So. so is it as aesthetically pleasing as your beard? Uh, no, that will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> 
So now that we've got that to actually fit on there, um, on the back of this, because we have to get that pin on and we're gonna have to do it after we glue this whole thing, we're gonna slide the pin through it. Um, I want to flatten this a little bit. So you can use water if you wanna get it wet. I, I just use the stylus and I'm just gonna push it down because this is a uh, veg tan and the split will do the same thing. Um, all I'm gonna do with the edge of this is I'm gonna run it across the center and give it just a little bit of a divot, enough for that pin to go through. This isn't something that you're gonna see. So make sure, yeah, so there's the camera, so we're gonna... Put your hand, hand in the camera. camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put my hand right in front of it so you can't see a thing. I don't want you to see any of this. I don't want you to see my discoveries, I'm getting ready. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't educate everyone on discoveries nice, tonight. Nice. Discoveries versus mistakes. Yeah. Michael yeah. wants to see you sew again sometime soon, Rusty, since you and I had a great time. On the show. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, we will, we will certainly try the machine out before we start sewing and, and filming. Yeah, we just blame that on Clayton. Yeah, he, right? He didn't set us up well. That guy. <laughs> All right, so if we hold that together, like we're gonna have it glued, and then just run our pin through there, make sure it's gonna oh, actually okay. go through. Okay. So we're not gonna glue very far. Boy, we are pretty close to that. So this this is gonna be a challenge getting that on there. But that's, again, that's what our, what our stylus is for, is we can kind of pick our way through it. We're only gonna glue up to about, whoop, Right before those holes. Right before those holes. So we're gonna have a little bit that we can kind of flex it and move that pin around in there a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further with this one because uh, it is thicker in the center. Um, and I'm gonna sand it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back and, and groove it. Again, this isn't something that you're going to see. Uh, this is all hidden within the center Could of the lock. Could you pin. use a groover? Yes, <laughs> yep, yep. And I actually showed them how to do a... <laughs> So you did you did show using a groover? Yeah, yeah, showed using a groover to kind nice. of get a uh, a little actually, sweat in there. And actually, that's not a bad idea. Jimmy so. Rig a tea beveler to <laughs> groove. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, you're cheating. That's an edge beveler. I know. That's so all. So have you seen the straight? Just where the the groover is, just it's one tool, and you okay. can use it against the side of a ruler, and you basically just go from one side to the other. Just wherever you want it, you just groove it right there, and it just okay. takes a little divot right out of that. Then yes. we just come up with like the poor man's groovers. I think okay. <laughs> yeah, so it, it almost has like a, a little L shaped thing. Well, no, 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 no. The one that I'm talking about doesn't. Oh, the one okay. that I'm talking about really looks like a hole punch, except for the hole is horizontal instead of. Okay. Okay, yeah. No, I haven't ever heard about that. I don't know about that. Too. Yeah, yeah. About the whole thing. Thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, you know. What if you do? If you don't have a groover, you can edge bevel it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, use what you got. You Andrew forgets yeah. that he works at a, 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 a place with all kinds of stuff. I tell you what, I learned so much here, but I still a lot of the things I've just done the same way for so many years, and I just keep doing them that way. So, uh, oh, we better get a, we there better get a ruler on that beard. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is that what you brought that for? <laughs> Uh, I, the lip, I think we're going from the bottom. Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. you're six yeah. inches from yeah. the chin. So that's eight. That's eight. Eight inches. Eight inches. Eight inches. Eight inches. Yeah. Yes. How many? Yep, that's a 12 inch. So room. eight inches. So like a little over 10 centimeters. We got some people from out of states here. So I want to make sure that we're clear. Everybody put it in the inches. And it looks like. Oh, they're nice. Looks like Susan Knotts from Facebook was the first one to put eight. We had a couple eights in there. Hey, hey Susan! Good job, Susan. You win the beautiful valet tray. That Are you married? Out. Does your husband have a beard? Is this how you know this? <laughs> uh, All right, well, I'm uh, Beard Lord of the West. Rusty did his job. I've done my job. We've measured the beard. A French butler. Uh, no. Nope. No. <laughs> Terry Price was in Australia, and that was his. Well, no, they actually make one that is literally like a... Just the hole punch is flat, so you punch a hole like this. Yeah. This has a hole like drilled through it, and then it's sharpened, and it just comes right down to a point, and you just whoosh. and it works just the same way as a saddle or sa a saddle stitcher and groover. Okay, you think we have yeah. any here? I probably probably. I tell you what, I'll go look. Oh, That's all fine. Quite a <laughs> Don't count on me to come back. <laughs> Can you grab my beard oil while you're out, please? I'm That's getting a little dry. That's not going to happen. We're coming until you get back. Oh, right in here. <laughs> oh. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm sanding the back of these watch bands. 
Um, this is because I'm getting ready to glue them. Uh, we fit the, uh, the buckle on there, or I did briefly, so that's gonna go over right here. I sanded the top portion of this right here, Still of actual the came, the came and tail, because when this folds over, it's gonna go right over that top piece right there. So I just want that little edge. You don't wanna go too far with it, but uh, so I sanded a little bit of that, and then I'm, I'm gonna do, do the rest of this. This just roughs it up for the glue, so the glue has something to attach to. Um, we do have a tool for this. We do, it's called sure. a rougher. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I consider it slightly a dangerous tool. It's just a metal yeah. brush. And so yeah. if you're not careful, especially on small things like this, you can yep. brush your fingers with tiny metal. Oh, yeah, they're like little needles. Yeah, and, yeah. That does, I've done that oh. like several times. So in this case, Liz, you had an awesome idea. Why didn't I just Why use didn't you split? just use a split? Because then you wouldn't even have to do it. Because we're not going to see any of this. No. So. So don't waste your good yeah, leather. Just buy the splits. Hindsight, right? So. <laughs> That's okay. Point, point. It makes it look pretty. <laughs> it does, yeah. Again, with this, with this, uh, this is all going to be on the inside. So you're not going to you're not going to see any of this. Um, so just rough it up a little bit. It's going to get some of the ink off from where uh, I traced the pattern on and everything. Um, but I'm not worried about the edges looking good at this point. Um, we're going to do that at the end. So. Yeah, I will say, if you decide to cut your product out from the top side, using an ink pen is probably not 100% the way you want to go. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but if you're doing yeah. it on the bottom, then it's fine. Yep. That's yeah. just one of those things that I didn't know about silver marking pens before I started working here, and uh, so I always use pens or Sharpies or whatever. That's like yeah. a year, guy. Don't use Sharpies on left. It has been a year. <laughs> but I'm trying to assimilate. In it. my defense, I'd only been shopping here for 15 years before that, so... So we didn't train as well. That's odd. We failed. That's right. All right, glue. I oh, got it. I'm got shaking it, it up. For you. Shaking it up. All right. Oh, this stuff smells so good. Mm. Did you hear that, Andrew? You, what? You had made it to another continent. I made it to another continent? Australia was also shaking. Oh, yeah. Hey. Welcome, yeah. Welcome, guys. Love it. You know what? I feel like I'm just going to finish some edges while I stand here. We had Europe, yeah. Asia, and Australia. We got some Toco Pro. Oh, perfect. Right? I'm gonna do your work for you. Hey, I love that. You're really good at edges too, so I don't mind that at all. But the good at making herself useful. I am. <laughs> when she wants to be useful. Yeah. And this is a good point to pay attention because I almost went right through the center of this. Oh. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because that's where your pin goes. So I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that off. Guys, we need to stop distracting Andrew. I know. So you're gonna to want to come up right to the the edge, and you you can get the the glue off if you get it quick enough. Um, that's also what, uh, grab it here real quick. That's what this thing is for, the leather eraser. This I did not know about before I started working here. I tell you what, this is a life changer. It will get rubber cement off of your fingers. It will get it out of your beard if you're really careful. But most importantly, it gets it off of leather. So it'll get pen marks off of leather sometimes, uh, most of the time actually. But it's good for good for getting that rubber cement off when you when you kind of screw it up. It'll actually do it on the uh, on the good side of the leather too. So if I if I mess up on the uh, the good side of the leather and I get something on that I'm gonna want a tool or something, it will take it off of there after it's dry. So still not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, yeah. yeah, you don't want to do that on a on a finished product. Yeah. Sorry, Lynn. To the bevelin, or no, I'm not bevelin. I'm yeah, burnishing. Burnishing. Don't also call it by burnishing. burnishing, beveling, whatever. So why, why do you do that with a uh, piece of burnishing cloth instead of uh, using a like one of these? I do both. Yeah. I get it worked in with my burnishing cloth, and then so my first layer is usually I'm just burnishing the product into it, okay. and then I'll add another layer, and then I'll start using the wooden slicker. Okay. Because I bevel for days or burnish whatever this is, guys. <laughs> whatever it is. That is she true. She burnishes yeah. for days that turns into beveling. That's right. All right, I'm going to block her real quick to show you this. Maybe. There we go. No, there, no? there it is. Yeah, there we go. So I go right up to the edges with my glue. Like Always. as close as I can get. Especially when you're trying to make two pieces of leather look like one. Yes. You want to go as close to the edge as you can get. Because when you burnish it and when you sand the edge, it's going to take that glue off. And Liz probably knows this better than... Than anybody. So some you of the, don't want any gaps in your edges. That's just bad leather work. Yeah. So yeah. Doesn't, doesn't look good. No. So you can always clean it up. Yeah. Um. Do you want to tell a story about the glue that Andrew is using? Guys, you love this story. We tell it every time we do a video. Oh yeah. So Andrew is using a product called Van Grip. Um, oh. 
I wondered why it was uh, smelling yeah. extra sweet today. Yeah. So there are several types of contact cements in the leather world. Um, the kind that we sell most readily are going to be Masters and Barge. Really, there's no difference between those two products with the exception of Barge is a little bit more yellow. Masters is, is more of a clear product. Um, otherwise, they are both contact cements. They need to be used on some sort of a roughed up um, opened grain leather. You don't want to use them on a slick finished leather because they're not going to stick to it. Contact cement works because you apply it to both sides of your project. It soaks into the fibers of the leather. Um, once it's tacky, you put it together and it sticks to itself. So the, we use Van Grip in our shop and that's what we always have in our little awesome bottles that we sell. Um, we used to have a boot maker that worked in our shop and that was his favorite uh, product. So he used Van Grip for forever. It's very, very similar to Masters and Barge. That's just, we buy it in five gallon tubs from the chemical company and then we pour it in the shop. So same thing, just, uh, just one more product. If you wanted to call up and order some, we'll pour you a, a quart and you can buy it but it's the same as Masters and Barge. Yeah. So. Good, good stuff. So this, uh, we go to the overhead camera real quick. That was the piece that I just stuck some on a finished side of veg tan. Um, that's where the glue was. I usually let it dry till it's a little bit tacky and then I'll hit it with the leather eraser. Um, like Liz was saying, it's not ideal because um, it could leave some marks on it. And it could kind of prevent your dye yeah. or finish from yep. adhering correctly. But getting getting it off there is possible. So just just be careful, don't do it. All right. And then Curious, yeah. Curious Man said he hopes that everybody at FLC understands and re recognizes how much of a class act with this. A class act. I don't know what that means. I don't really know what that means either. So. <laughs> but thank you. It means you're, you're a class act, Liz. So. All right. It, thank it's you. It's a compliment. Okay. <laughs> That's why they have me, guys. I don't know, otherwise, I'd just be back in the office. <laughs> So next part I'm going to do is the buckle, um, and I actually got some glue on the, the back of the, uh, yeah, go for it. So, uh, got some glue on the back of the uh, the finished side of this, so we'll take that off with the eraser here in a minute. Um, the prong of the buckle, um, you're going to want to face the end, um, so, yeah, there we go, so we're going to want to face the, the end this way, because this is going to lift up and it's going to go through this, this part, so just lay that through there. And this is a roller buckle. Um, we sell these in-house too. Um, I've got glue at the uh, glue on the back of this already. You want to form that around uh, the the end of that buckle as best you can, and get it in the center. And then the two holes that we punched earlier. There's two holes on the top, two holes on the back from the template. You're going to want to try and match those up as best as you can. Um, when these uh, when these two pieces touch, because it's a contact cement, it's a permanent bond. All right, so that part is done. Use my leather eraser to get some of this glue off there. Yeah, when you get contact cement on a finished side of leather, it's really not too big of a, a deal because no. no. it, it doesn't soak in, it doesn't stick, so you can yep. just get that right off. All right, okay, so that's that part right there. Um, I'm not gonna set this quite yet, uh, so I need a little bit more glue on that top, top flap. I forgot about that. Um, and by setting it, I, I mean either with pressure or with, with a hammer. Uh, you can just push the glue together and it'll set, but generally I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my hammer and I'm going to whack it a few times. You have to be careful with that, <laughs> especially on a, on a finished uh, product like this with veg tan. You don't want to do that because you're going to dent and you're going to ding the uh, if ding you got, up. If you do it on the granite, it's not as bad because as yes. long as the granite, yep. the granite is super smooth, as long as you don't have any debris on there, mm -hmm. you could turn your veg over and kind of seat it on that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. but not on the beautifully textured piece of board that we've put a million holes in. Right. <laughs> So at this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna run this through here and get our our watch piece on. Do you guys know that burnishing is is a loud occupation? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> I'm gonna try to show what that that racket was over there, but you, yeah. keep, you keep moving around. My husband does not appreciate when I'm burnishing while we're watching TV. Oh really? <laughs> no, he think no. It's apparently it's distracting as I shake the couch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the noise of the movement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my wife doesn't mind so much, I don't think. Because so. you're out in yeah. the garage. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I'm out in the garage. <laughs> All right. So got to this point. 
Um, these holes are going to line up because we're going to do a little bit of stitching on them um, like that. It's, well, that's the opposite piece, so like this. Like, like that one. <laughs> like that one. So, so we've got a couple places to do stitch holes. I didn't, I missed that one. I, I did that on purpose to show you what it looks like without the stitching. Hey, are we going to put a keeper on this thing? Yes, we are going to put a keeper on this thing. So, but first I'm going to, I'm going to set this. I'm glad you set that because I would have forgotten that. Keep on going on. When does it go on? Mm -hmm. Generally, before you do this, because it's a lot, it's a lot easier. So generally, you'll put it on before you do this. But you know, I I like to live on the edge. Very excited. Yep. Yeah. That and I forgot to make the keeper. So. so. That's okay, Clayton. And I forgot to put handles on our bag. Oh really? <laughs> we had to we had to get back to that in the next video. Oh. Uh, oh, I almost lost my pen. Okay, that's, that's looking. That top edge is looking shiny. It's so to... van grip again. If you, it's not on our website. You won't find no. it anywhere. You have to call in. But if you are anxious to try it, give us a holler. We'll set you up with a quart. I think the pricing is pretty similar to Barge. Jeffrey was Matthews. asking if it smelled just as wonderful as Barge, and I think it maybe even works. Oh yeah, it's or great. The, or it's pretty strong. Depending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or depending if you like it or not, right? So. You want to make sure you do it in a closed room, no <laughs> ventilation. Exactly. Yeah. A so. small unventilated <laughs> room. <laughs> I'm really just kidding. Please yeah. don't do yeah, that. Yeah, don't do that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Another thing that I just noticed to the uh, the flat portion and why we put the buckle on it the way that we did. Um, when it folds back over itself like this, you want that facing the wrist. Otherwise, it's it's just going to look weird with that flap and potentially over time just peel up and not look good. So, so that that part is done except for the keeper. So I need a little piece to use on the keeper. So oh, yeah, we yeah. Why don't nice. we use that? Those that's, will, that's that'll be good. great. So. How would you do the keeper on this one, Liz? Honestly, you, uh, how thin is that? Go across that. To, it's it's pretty thin. No, that's good. That's good. I don't know. Let's see. That, that looks like a good fold. Yeah. That looks like a good spot. That's pretty stout. Just so. right across the So scale. right right across the scales instead of going this way, we're gonna go this way I with think it. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. How does that bottom one fold compared to the top one? Oh, they're pretty good. Never mind. About the same? Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe I felt something, but I didn't. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so this this one I'm gonna lay on here and kind of get an idea of where I need to be, and then I'm gonna trace on the back. Um, since this will be be facing out, I don't want to get pen marks on it. So, so I'm gonna have to come right up to the edge on we this have one. A silver marking so, pen? Um, I don't know if we do or not. I had one in my uh, my kit. I might have one here. I do. Look at that. So a little silver marking pen there. And these are uh, very inexpensive. They're. And they yeah, I think great. you can buy like a dozen of them for like two two bucks or something. Yeah, ten, yep. a pen a pen pack or a ten pack or a pen pack a pen pack. <laughs> Oops, sorry. All right, that's so everybody. Just trace right on the inside of the uh, inside of this, and that's our result right there. So, Beautiful. So the silver marking pens. Why why do we use the silver marking pens over just normal ink? The silver marking pen you can wipe off of a finished surface, so you can't wipe it off. Surface. But if you wanted to trace that on the front side, mm -hmm. you can wipe it off. Oh, great! So okay, cool. Yeah, it doesn't work on veg tan to wipe off because veg tan is not finished. Yep. Unless you did finish it, um, but so that's just a silver marking pen is really really nice. You can draw just kind of like you know fabric um, seamstresses. They've got those like chalk pencils that they use and then they they can wipe off the fabric the silver marking pen is the same for us leather crafters only on finished leathers and again when uh, cutting this out just a little bit at a time just a little bit stop a little bit stop um one, once you get good at it uh, you won't get the the little burrs when you do that uh, but especially with this since we've got really hard scales on the back it's harder to cut through even with a um even with a razor blade, you're going to get to a point and you don't want to catch on that and, and end up hurting yourself. So, all right. So for this, who, who of you at home has cut the side of your finger off while cutting a belt? <laughs> right. That's, a, that's like a rite of passage in the shop. Yeah. You, yeah, you, no you can't. So many fingerless people there. <laughs> Not fingerless. Oh. But like, like just, just the side. They just cut the skin right off. You have 10 fingers, you are definitely not a left worker. It, it is really hard doing this project with only three fingers. I don't, I don't know how to grip things. And, uh, so what, what I'm doing with the keeper here uh, is the, or the piece that I cut out, um, is I'm fitting it around the leather uh, 
like Liz was saying, you probably want to do this before you glue it all together because it's going to be a little difficult getting this on here, but I'll figure it out. So, so we fit it around the band. Oh. And you don't want it super tight. Let me go back down here to the camera. There we go. Because you probably have to get the other side through. You do. Yeah. And you're going to have to get twice as much through because we're we're folding this over like this. So we're gonna we're gonna have to get a, a good amount of thickness through there. So well, I've got an idea. If we finish yeah. this piece, then we'll have it together, and then you can make your keeper. I've got an even better idea. Why don't we finish this piece so that we know? <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna fold this over and glue it together. Oh. Because Liz has all the good ideas today. What? what oh, you don't have to put your thingy in yet. Well, I could, but I don't. I don't think it's gonna fit over okay. this part. So I, yeah. you know, just check yeah. it. I've never made one of these before. I haven't either. I'm just winging this. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, glued together, and I'm going to use my hammer to uh, little pipe. it. All right. You'll notice it's not perfect on the sides, um, or maybe you won't notice because the camera's really far away and <laughs> Tony's not paying attention and switching cameras. So, so you probably have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Overhead? Yeah. Overhead. So, so right there on the uh, on the ends, it's not matching up perfectly on the end, and that is okay. Just get as close as you can go because we're going to sand this and we're going to burnish it, and potentially on this because we're getting uh, some veg tan in there. You can even use like an edge coat, like oh, a yeah. black or brown edge coat. We'll on make that, it, so. that beautiful edge. Some of that new Fenici edge coat. Oh yeah. Oh yep. yeah. Yep. I haven't actually used that stuff yet, so maybe this is a good time to use it. Yeah. Now we're going to put the uh, pin through here, and I'm having a little bit of trouble, which is what I thought it was going to happen, of getting that pin through here. So, stylus, you can use your silver marking pen, you can use your awl, although you might stab yourself, which is what I'm going to do because I live on the edge. And it just seems to be the right size. So we're just going to open that up just a little bit. You just have to be real careful because that is sharp on that edge. And what I'm trying to do here is just get enough enough opening in the side right there um, for this little wire piece for the the watch end to fit through and that's that's much better so because of the grooves that we made um, on there um, it's fitting in there pretty good so now i just have to push up on both sides with this and it's so tiny it is it is so tiny and sometimes you'll even get to this point and it it doesn't fit like right here it is super close so i'm gonna have to adjust that with this together so I'm going to show you how to do that. And you'd think I'd learn from the other one that uh, that I did because the same thing happened on the other watch band. But I'm, I'm trying to teach people, right? So. Well, okay, so maybe at this point you could, if you take that pin out, you could mm -hmm. go sand. And you could sand off enough, maybe. That's true. Like if you if you have a if drum pin, it would probably take, take me yep. a while with the hand sander. Right. Um, but I was just going to trim just a little trim bit off. Um, with a razor blade and then... Uh, Again, just a little bit at a time. Not a lot. Angle it just a little bit. Then the other side, and then flip it over. Then the other side. In mistakes like this, uh, it's just a learning, a learning thing. People aren't going to notice this. You're going to be the one that notices this, especially if you're making it for somebody else. As long as it's functional and you can get it to a point where it, it looks looks good i'm all right with that I, I mean my stuff isn't isn't perfection so so kevin said leather work isn't about being perfect it's about being good enough that's right <laughs> joshua yeah. said he just pulled his stitches out last week <laughs> pulled his stitches out yeah because he cut himself oh, oh. ouch <laughs> don't cut yourself people i wish i could see what you were doing all right Andrew. Oh, can you not? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not watching the screen. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing so I don't stab myself. So it wasn't wasn't quite enough. So I'm going to trim a little bit more. Here you can see if we can get you some stitches. <laughs> All right. There we go. Does everybody else love burnishing too? I just think that it's the bee's knees. It's not my favorite thing in the world. No? No. I, it's, I, I, I like the hand stitching. Uh, my hands don't like the hand stitching. Because I do a lot of it. But, but uh, there we go. So I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing and focus on the cameras to make sure you guys can see what's uh, what's happening. 
So the well, pins are pins are right there. So I'm gonna try and put this on and see what uh, see what happens. And which camera? There we go. This one right here. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so we're gonna fit this in. Um, another thing to keep in mind too, uh, these uh, these pieces, uh, one has a silver, or one has a uh, silver and two black, and then the other side has three black. So whatever you find aesthetically pleasing, I'm gonna use all three black, that's gonna be your, your top portion. So. Just fit that in there. So Liz. Yes, sir. They want to know if Andrew got into leather crafting after watching Harry Potter. I mean, as anyone should. Then they then they started then they started saying you look like Hagrid. I tell you what, I I take that as a compliment. I love Hagrid. He's the best. <laughs> I didn't get into leather crafting after I watched Harry Potter. I had I had been in it since since I was younger, but uh, but that's definitely the direction that I I take my side hustle. I love love doing nerdy things with with leather. Yeah, what's your uh, what's your leather business called? Oh, uh, Grin Beard Leather. So yeah, the beard. Yeah, because the beard. <laughs> And because I'm a grim. very grim person, so no energy whatsoever. I don't get excited about things. <laughs> Everybody in here is laughing at me right now. So. <laughs> okay, I'm still not there, and this is a. So I got to shave just a little bit more off, but a little at a time. I'm pretty satisfied with my edges. You don't need to take any off your edges. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this is the type of stuff you don't want to you don't want to force on because you, you want it to look good and you want it to actually function when you're done. Um, and if you if you force this onto here, like I I could have gotten it on there, it's probably not going to hold. And if you're selling it or giving it away or something or even using it, you don't want it to pop off. Don't want it popping off. Not on a smartwatch. You don't want to. Those don't are those that. are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> not allowed. Uh, Carl Johnson hit kind of the nail on the head with his comment. I like that some of these videos are less experienced people or doing totally new projects who are making discoveries as well. <laughs> it's a nice contrast to Diddy, who has a lot of experience to pull yes, from. He does. Everything he really does. simple. He just yep. do leather work with his eyes closed. Exactly. Right. Yep. I'm so excited. He's going to start making me chaps on Friday. <laughs> there you go. I don't know where I'm going to wear them, guys, but I'm going to have some chaps. <laughs> you can just wear them around here. That's, That's true. Yeah. It is cold right now. It is disgusting outside. Is it really? Uh, well, well maybe not for you, Hagrid. Oh. <laughs> In your mole skin coat. In <laughs> my mole skin coat. <laughs> Brought his little serious black motorcycle. Yeah. Blew it in. It's not, it's not mole skin. It's the, it's the skin of goblins. No, it's moleskin. I specifically yeah. just read it like last week. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> oh, okay, so who's who's the real nerd now? <laughs> uh. But yeah, if you like uh, if you like nerdy stuff, I am I am working hard uh, to get a YouTube channel up and going um, to teach people how to how to make stuff with leather. So, and that's uh, it's attached to my Grimbeard leather stuff. Uh, Grimbeardleather.com goes right to uh, my Etsy website. Um, but if you uh, dig a little bit deeper, like onto my Facebook page and Instagram, and can see my stuff there, you'll you'll notice a few posts about a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Grimbeard's Academy of Conjuring, um, and I'm very nerdy. <laughs> so, so, but I, I'm going to show people how to how to make this type of thing, but add a nerd twist to it, or make a wallet and put something cool on it, like the Wonder Woman symbol or the Batman symbol or whatever you want to do with it. So, but along the way, I, I'm going to try and do a lot of videos just with quick how-to tips, just a couple minutes, how to burnish an edge, how to do a saddle stitch, how to sharpen your edge beveler, how to stab yourself through the hand with a one of these red hot pokers. Yeah. Or not to do that. No, we want to see you do it. No. <laughs> so speaking of red hot pokers, uh, this is the... Uh, um, it's so keeper. cute. It is. So. <laughs> it's like a little piece of scrap. And I just measured this uh, uh, keeper on here, and I'm gonna have enough on this for, for one stitch hole. So I'm gonna put one hole in the end there, and one hole in the end here. Generally, you wanna have a couple on here, but this, because of how thick it is, 
and I'll show you on the side there, this is a little bit too thick for a watch band, to be honest. Um, so you'd, you'd want to take that inside piece down a little bit more, probably about half of that. And when you double the leather over, it gets, this, this is going to be a stout watch band. So. I was going to say, like uh, I was saying, when the situation, like you could have only, you could have lined one half of it to mm -hmm. around the loop, and then you could have just glued the rest to like a piece of split. That's a really good point. And I, yeah, I didn't even think about that. And that yeah. would have avoided the problem up here because I, I don't, this, this is on there, but I don't think it's going to hold very well on this particular piece. So by doing just half of it lined on the back, that would, that mm -hmm. would take care of two problems with one, so. Or if you would have lined it like that and you just went over the side of it and then mm -hmm. just went to where you stitch and then have nothing on it and then you have the fuzzy split sure. on your wrist. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have thought about that. <laughs> All right, so I am down to the point of stitching the uh, keeper, and this is going to be a little bit harder because I'm going to have to stitch it while it's on the band, which is generally why you do it before you glue all this together. Um, and I, I was able to get two holes in there. Uh, so saddle stitch, if you're uh, familiar with the saddle stitch, uh, it's it's pretty easy. Use two needles um, to do the stitch. Uh, the thread that I'm using is a rhino thread that we sell here in house, and we have just a ridiculous amount of colors of this rhino thread. I think what there's 40 or something. That's a lot. It's a lot. So these are all the colors that that we have. I got this little bobbin case holder thing, and then wound a little bit of each of the colors of the rhino thread on here just to so I, I'd have some variety. If I'm stitching on my couch or I'm I'm away on on a trip or something like that. I've got them all with me. I can match it up to whatever wall that I'm making. So. Andrew does a lot of prep for his leather work. I do. <laughs> I do. I really do. So, uh, um, so Salvador is asking, how do you burnish the edges? Exotics are hard to burnish with gum drag or other burnishing agents. They sure are. Uh, Toka Pro is amazing. It is amazing on the edges of exotics. I, uh, it's a little bit, like, just slightly thinner than Toka Nol, um, but it's essentially the same product. Yeah, they're very similar. Um, they're they're very very similar. Um, I prefer the Toka Pro because uh, when I when I'm using it, I generally use it in a little eyedropper bottle like that. <laughs> Once again, and, yeah. tiny prepped product. Tiny <laughs> prepped product. Yes. <laughs> so, but you can you can use your finger or you can use a little piece of burnishing cloth or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so whatever I mean, you know. on its own, it would be a terrible time just trying to burnish a piece of of caiman like this edge on its own. But when it's lined with a piece of veg, that helps quite a bit to yeah. add that extra kind of firmness. Stiffens it up a little bit. Yep. Yeah, and then you can burnish together. Yep. Um, I would still, usually when doing two-ply, I do like to stitch. Like if I've got a two-ply and then uh, an edge like this, I I like to stitch the top of the edge just to make sure that I'm not only relying on the glue to hold. I mean, typically on a wallet, you're not going to come up with so much stress that it's going to pull them apart. But maybe like kind of picking in over the years, you know, as you try to get your, your cards out or dig into the, the, the wallet pocket or something, you might kind of open up those layers. Sure. And that also helps with stitching. I'm just going to burnish this edge for the next half an hour. You've only been burnishing for about half an hour. I know. I mean, you, I don't, can you over burnish guys? Does anybody, do you feel like you can over, I don't think you can over burnish. You can just keep burnishing. Just keep burnishing. burnishing turns back into beveling. <laughs> <laughs> it's the circle of leather life. So. so I'm trying to saddle stitch this very, very tiny piece of. That looks terrible. It, it is awful. <laughs> <laughs> So, and the leather is stiff enough that uh, I have to use a pair of pliers to get it through because I, I brought my medium size uh, needles, not my, uh, not my tiny ones, my small ones. Once again, you work at a leather shop. I know. And I think you're getting paid to do this video right now. You probably have used our supplies. Yeah, I probably could. You yeah, probably I would probably brought all my supplies from home. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Wait, everybody's set in their ways. I'm, I'm dead set in mine, I guess. <laughs> I think all we really have done is just kind of assembling everything, right? Yeah, yep, just uh, assembling everything right now, and I'm, I'm doing the final stitches on this uh, on this keeper. The only thing I have left on this particular one uh, would be to stitch the, uh, um, like, the portions right here, uh, these holes yeah. down, there over. <laughs> hey, there we go. Over the cutting board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. Here. <laughs> so... 
So not a, not a whole lot left. Um, I use pliers to pull things through because if I, if I sit there and I'm trying to pull this needle through and I'm working back and forth, you can actually break your, break your stitch holes. Um, but certainly so with something so delicate. Yes. At this yep. point, yeah. Are your, do you have groove pliers? Do you have smooth? Um, I have groove pliers. <laughs> like they got some grip on them. Yeah. Um, these are saddle stitching needles and I very rarely break them. I mean, you could break them obviously with that pair of pliers, but uh, they are they are some stout needles for sure. Every once in a while, I'll break one pulling it through a sheath. It's a half an inch thick. Yeah. But that's that's about the only. Are, are you using groove ones or smooth ones? Oh, um, I usually use smooth pliers. Yeah. But I mean, that's just what I have at home. All right, so we got I the use keeper smooth ones as well, just so I don't mar up the needle as I poke it back through the hole. <laughs> We've got the keeper on there now, so again, do that first. So it's only the second watch band I've ever made. So, so. okay. All right, and then uh, just stitching these sides. So you have four. Um, don't uh, don't skimp on your thread. Like I, I always tend to to measure at least five times what I need for the length I'm doing something. So if I'm stitching this wallet that uh, Liz has been burnishing, I'm going to go around the the edges right here. And I'm gonna measure five times the amount of thread that I'm gonna use for that. It's it's a little bit based on thickness, but for the most part, between the five and six mark, that's where I get enough thread that I need. I'm gonna end up at the end with about that much extra thread. And I'm all right with that. Because Do you need five times me... doubled? Or just no, five times just five total? Times. Okay. Just five times, yep. Just five times whatever the length of it is. And it's between five and six. So if you have a thicker piece, uh, you'll kind of have to gauge that. If your thread's a little bit thicker, um, you're going to want a little bit more. But when, I, when I'm done, I want a piece about this long. I, I want enough so it's that... It's no fun to stitch with, like, No, with, like, that much. And, like, you put your needle through and you have to re-thread it and pull it through. Oh, it's no, just, our battery's exhausted. Yeah. So we just lost the camera. There we go. All right. <laughs> Does that mean I need to speed up? No. No, he has batteries. All right. Need All right. I have batteries somewhere. Okay. All right, so this is the, uh, um, this one you don't have to saddle stitch, and I'm, I'm using way too much thread here, so so there's a there's a lot of thread for these little little bits that we have to do. So you're just whipping it around the edge, yeah? Just whipping it around the edge, and I'm going to do it twice on these. Um, so just down through the bottom, or, yep, down through the bottom, so that's the bottom part. Up through the bottom? Up, up through the bottom, up through the bottom, there we go, so up through one the bottom. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. <laughs> and then I uh, go back through once and back through twice. And see, it looks great. No, I accidentally did that. <laughs> <laughs> looks awful. Just kidding. There we go. All right. So we've got two, three pieces of thread going around, and then we're going to tie it on the back and then melt it. Um, you can tie a knot like this, and I'm going to do it on here just to show you. So... Tie the knot on the back. You want the knot facing the bottom. You can take your needle to hide the stitch and go into the leather like that and push it back through. There we go. So I'm trying to get this on camera for you um, to hide your knot inside of there. Like pull that so knot just, up into the hole? Yep, just okay. pulling it into the hole to make it, uh, make it disappear like that. And then you would use another needle, you would grab that one and go back through and do that same thing there. Um, I'm not going to do it on, on this, that's that's what I do with some of my wallets to make the uh, make the stitch hidden. Um, but in this situation, I'm uh, just going just gonna to melt it. So, use my trimmers. My workspace is getting cluttered. So we'll cut that off. Use some fire to melt the end. Liz is getting tired. She's yawning. I know. I had lunch. And now it's nap time. See, if we do those these, these videos before, I'm just really hungry by the time we're done. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> so this, this is why I like to use a lot of extra thread. When I'm, when I'm coming through here like this, you could potentially just go right up to the edge because you're, you're not going to need very much, but you want something to grab a hold of. <laughs> Um, when you're tying that knot, so yeah, thread is cheap, guys. It is, it is, and it's and it's a pain to struggle with just little bits of it. So yeah, yeah it's it's only a few bucks for this entire spool, yeah. and I I have not gone through one of these spools yet, and I probably stitched fifty wallets. I'm trying to think. Yeah. We do eight ninety nine 
I think so. Or 250 yards? Yeah, and it's 250 yards. It's like 750 feet. Not like, I think it is. 750 feet. I think feet. that's the map. <laughs> All right, so there's two down. I usually do a double knot um, on the end of this before I, I trim it and melt it into itself. So. Six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it is cheap. So don't uh, don't skimp on your threads. <laughs> and by cheap, I mean inexpensive. This is really good thread. I, I use it for a lot of my projects. Um, anything that I'm hand stitching, it's it's what I use. So. And it's a flat thread. It is a flat braided thread. Yes. Yep. Thread is cheap. Right. So I got to that point, a uh, little bit of a bump that you're not going to want <laughs> on your wrist, kind of scraping against your wrist. So, so I usually will pound those down. Um, that's what I use my steel plate for. So I just get it on the edge, and then I use a, uh, a flathead hammer, and then I'll just kind of tap. And I go light because my finger is right there, and I don't want to smash it. No, oh, why not? Don't hurt your fingers, Hagrid. <laughs> I need it for all my spell casting. Well, you could have done that. He's not allowed to do that. Use a thread <laughs> yeah, that's true. You could use a thread burner. Yeah. Oh, you could use magic He's to burn the threads. We're taking this Mag real far, magic. guys. <laughs> it's, not, it's not working. It's not working. You're not allowed to use it. That's right. <laughs> all right, so that is... Yep, that's the right side. Yeah. Carl did the math for us, and it's... Point zero zero nine a foot. Oh. Point zero zero nine. So a not foot? even one penny penny every foot. Not even a penny a foot. Not yeah. even. Barely. Math, math is hard. Math is hard. I'm not going to check his numbers. I'm just going to take his word for it. That's right. <laughs> Sounds great. We, we trust that. our customers. <laughs> trying to keep my batteries all charged. <laughs> Poor guys running around. Yeah. How long have we been going? Am I boring people to death yet? No. I mean, you're at an hour twenty-three. Woo! Man. And Liz, can you name your favorite tool? Can I name my favorite tool? My lizard stamp. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, Stamps a tool. I think that counts. No, it is. Nobody else can buy it. Yeah, that's, that's right. You know what I was thinking the other day? Somebody asked us if we would have, we're going to try to put a hurting on Denny, and I think I'm going to give him like a 16 penny nail and maybe a 20 penny nail and see if he can do, we have those coasters, like these coasters, mm. and see if he could do a coaster with a, with nail? Just a hammer and a nail. Oh, man. Interesting. You, I, I think I've seen a video on that happening. But the, those bigger penny nails, those yeah. thicker nails, they have a textured head on it, so you can yeah. use that as a background. background. That's true. You might have to like, sand it down a little bit to... Or with the nail part. Yeah. You should just spring it on him. You should just bring him in here and act like he's doing some other video and just be like, nope. Just here you go, buddy. <laughs> I'll do it on Friday since I won't be here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Denny, we changed your video. And then uh, don't give him a mallet. Give him a roofing hammer. <laughs> we we can make this really fun. Or horrible, depending on how you look what at it. What are your guys' favorite tools? I mean, yeah. it's so subjective to what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I really like my awl. It's probably the prettiest tool that I own. I got it from Crimson Hide. A little shout out to those guys. They make some, some really awesome leather um, leather Custom tools. Custom tools? Mm-hmm. So, Liz has my favorite tool in her hand right now. Yeah, he's. I I have had that uh, for burnishing. Thirteen burnishing. years, twelve years. Burnishing like that. wand. Yeah. Burnishing wand. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> burnishing wand. I did get a really cool Celtic knot um, stamping tool from Barry King last year. That makes a that makes a really neat design. Robert likes his swivel knife. What kind of swivel knife you got, Robert? Is it a fancy one? Is it a plain one? Do you just strop it well? And Is it just like plain fancy? Oh, <laughs> Carl, Carl, uh, <laughs> Carl Johnson likes the new uh, SLC Pro Bevelers. Nice. We can't keep those things in stock. No. no, no we can't. I don't even have one. I couldn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get one. There are. are there really? So. Here. I'm not seeing them. I don't know where they're at. What's <laughs> yeah, those are nice. Yeah, they really are. They really are. I actually haven't been able to get a set either. 
See, that's that's how you know we actually care about our customers is we're not <laughs> when, buying the stuff out from under you. That's right. <laughs> There's just there's a tool for every job, so that's I true. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do really like my my stitching all. It's got like a nice like curved butt handle. Did I bring it in when I did my sat when when I did my knife sheets? I think you talked about it, but I don't think you brought it. I don't remember. You have to make something. You have to do something. I'll right. have to make something for you guys. Sometimes people call and they say, "Liz, when are you going to do your next video?" And I'm like, I just like not having to do anything and just standing here and talking. <laughs> that's what I'm good at. <laughs> Do we know what we're doing? I like to correct people. Yeah, that's true. I just critique. I just stand here and I make my critiques. <laughs> so maybe you should have made that. Double. Maybe you should have reminded me that before I started doing it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm on the the last knot here. Oh, home there. stretch. The home stretch. So. That's not bad. I mean, for your second watch band and you're right about an hour and a half. It really isn't. Yeah. So I guess if you put in the uh, time that I used to to back it to get her skived down and stuff, probably two and a half hours. Probably Minus took me three minutes that I messed the cameras up. That's true. That. <laughs> yep. No, we will forever remember that. And honestly, forever remember that. if he made the keeper first, it wouldn't take him nearly that long. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> if we had done the steps properly, Andrew. We would have followed our instructions. Guys, we do have instructions that come with this. So <laughs> you guys are just laying it on thick for me, aren't you? So like, I really am an experienced leather <laughs> I've been doing this 15 years. So it's like, <laughs> so no, I do not show. Projects that no one shows. Yeah, thank you. So like, <laughs> oh. Every, everybody has their own uh, their own niche. Like Liz is really good at sheets, like phenomenal at sheets. And that's the only thing I make. That's, <laughs> that's all I got. I'm I'm really good at wallets. Wallets and journals are my thing. I, I really enjoy making both of them. Um, Denny is phenomenal at tooling. Just blows my mind. He's also a really good saddle maker. And uh, I I don't know. So we we each have our. Uh, Things that we like to do. Uh, watch bands are not one of them for me. I, I enjoy them. Morning. Like it's fun. It's just not not my favorite. I'd rather be making a journal. <laughs> Larry Larry Schmidt said that he's going to be making a couple burnishing tools on his lathe tomorrow. Ooh, all that nice. Uh, from Ebony and I said, how can we get our hands on some of those? Nice. Yeah, no kidding. We'll make That's it pretty a, cool. We'll make it a burnishing tool here on set. Yeah. So another thing I didn't think through is uh, I don't have a smartwatch to put on this. So I have. I mean, one. I've got I've got my Fitbit, but I don't think that's gonna. I don't think those are. I don't think it's gonna fit on the bits that are on there. <laughs> 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 but I can but I can I'm match not. it up like that, you know. So yeah. So you kind of get the idea of what it what those it looks like. So steel Terry's not hey, uh, not too shabby. I think except for maybe some edging there on the yeah the end. Yeah, just have to work with the uh, work with the are. edges a little bit. And Mine's two millimeters too big. Yeah. That's all right. Well, we you, could, you could buckle it. Successfully done a watch pan, and you know what? I think I uh, I messed something else up. Do we need to punch some holes? No, no. I well, we do. Yeah, we do need. That's a good point. <laughs> we, do, we do need to widen these holes a little bit so that the buckle goes through. Um, now that we have them lined up, I'll I'll hit them with the punch again. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. But what I was what I was saying is we should have done the edges before I stitched it. Oh. Because so, especially on this back piece, we have four different uh, areas, and we have the keeper on there. Be so brilliant. these edges really should have been done before you. Uh, so you're going to cut so. those stitches out, edge it at home, and restitch it. So I Tony is that. going to cut those <laughs> off, and he's going to finish all this for us. <laughs> this this is you guys get the yeah, idea. Yeah, I know, right? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have burnishing machines in here, and we don't hand sand. <laughs> There we go. We All would right. love to have one, Larry. Larry said he would be happy to send us one. That'd be awesome. That's that's really cool. I like that. We yeah. would use it on we would use it on set. Because we have a burnishing tool behind you. We'll switch it out. You? The edging the edging Oh yeah. Tool oh that yeah. thing? The edge slicker. No, yeah. well the that's the wheel. I meant we had the same. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, make us one of these. We'll put it in our nifty little thing. We'll switch it out. Alright. Holes weren't big enough, so I had to get the uh, punch that is big enough. And the last hole. There we go. Salvador says, welcome to the Commonwealth. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> On your fallout thing, one. Oh, I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> or Brotherhood, or Institute. Yeah. <laughs> I've, only played, I've only played Fallout a couple times, but... Obviously. You can go see Kate for your next quest. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There so, he is. Like, like I said, a little bit a little bit too thick on the band. We need to go thinner with that. But, uh, I'm holding up to that camera above. I think the batteries died in the other ones. All right. There we go. Oh, focused in. There we go. So, and you'll notice the thickness too is affecting how far that pin comes down. So that is an important, uh, an important part of it. Oh yeah, that buckle's yep. having a hard time laying yep. flat. It's having a hard so time laying flat. Where so. your fingers are there, if you would have mm -hmm. kind of stopped it there and not double layered it all the way back down, would have helped out. That's true. Yep. You could even go thinner in this this part, or like Liz was saying, just do half, like line yeah. half of it, because when you glue it together, it's not gonna it's not gonna need that full thickness. So. And it's all lined. But that's how we learn. Like on uh, on this one, I didn't. It's not uh, lined at all. It's not lined at all, and it's it's a little. It's it's almost there. It's a good thickness, but on the other part of it, not being lined at all causes it to be completely flimsy, and like that would just pull apart. So, so honestly, with somewhere in between. Two, <laughs> I know it, it, it really is. So so two watch bands. If these took two hours a piece, you've got four hours in. You have two finished products that you've made something, and then the third one, all your mistakes have already been made. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. It's I'm not going to do it. I'm going to make Tony do it. But <laughs> it's like... <laughs> well, I haven't made any yet. <laughs> not, exactly. So you've got that learning curve, too. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that, yeah. Friday. Friday, Denny and I will be here. Um, we're going to get started on some chaps. So this is not going to be a single video situation. Um, probably three i'm gonna assume maybe more on making some chaps uh so join us friday at 11. cool awesome we'll see you then thanks bye guys <laughs> see you later